Welcome to the Lore Sworn War College for Hearts of Iron 4. You're watching our course on Division Design, and this is Lesson 204, Armored Divisions. Building a good armor division is a little bit harder than building a good infantry division, just because there are so many different models of tank. From light, to medium, to heavy, to super heavy, variations for each for tank destroyers, self-propelled artillery, and tracked anti-air, as well as the individual variants you can make by tweaking their stats using army experience. For the purposes of this video, we've unlocked all of the tanks up to 1941, and also the super heavy tank, the T-95, from 1943, just for the sake of comparison. But it's important to pay attention to where you are in the tech tree, and what the capabilities are of the individual models of tank you have unlocked, and the variants that you've created. Now before we look at individual models of tanks, let's go ahead and show one of the most common mistakes people make when designing a tank division and explain why not to do that. Now it's tempting to just take the best tanks you have and fill an entire division with them up to 20 combat width. If you want to know why that number is important, go back and watch our video on infantry. And this does create a fairly formidable division. They have a soft attack of 340, a hard attack of 190, 80 armor, 81 piercing, and 80% hardness, meaning they're only going to take 20% damage from small arms fire. That's pretty badass. Now the problem with making a division of all tanks, like the one you see here, is that their HP is only 20 and their organization is only 10, meaning they're going to have no staying power in battle whatsoever. Because of this, it's almost essential that you mix in some infantry with your tank divisions and which infantry you use will be based on the base speed of the tank that you're using. You really want to maximize the mobility of tanks and not drag them down with infantry support units that are slower than they are. So this 1941 medium tank has a max speed of 9. If we were to add even one leg infantry battalion to it, their speed is more than cut in half. It goes all the way down to 4. So the natural choice for balancing out tank division is to supplement it with motorized and mechanized infantry. So let's see what happens if we just cut out some of the tanks from this division and replace them with normal motorized infantry. We're still at 20 combat width, but our health has gone up by 92 and our organization has tripled. We do lose a significant amount of soft attack and hard attack, as well as breakthrough armor and piercing, but it's well worth it to have a unit that can actually stay in combat for a significant amount of time. Since motorized infantry have a base speed of 12, the medium tanks are what's slowing this division down, and we're still at a base speed of 9. If we wanted to speed them up a little bit, We could actually design a variant of the Sherman medium tank that has a slightly better engine on it, potentially creating a division with a speed of up to 9.9. .9. However, we do have another option that won't require us to sacrifice so much of our combat stats. We can swap out our motorized infantry for a mechanized infantry company. Their base speed in 1941 is 8 kilometers an hour and only goes up from there. But even with this lower tech version of mechanized infantry, we're only losing one point of speed, and the reductions in our combat effectiveness are far more forgiving than if we had gone with motorized. Now what you don't want to do is pair mechanized infantry with a base speed of 8 with light tanks, which tend to be much faster, and their main advantage is their mobility, not their firepower, so you're really reducing their core role and effectiveness if you pair them with something so much slower than they are. As you can see, removing each of these mechanized divisions gives us a division with a base speed of 14. So in this case, it would definitely be better in my opinion to go with motorized infantry, which will only reduce our speed by 2 to a base speed of 12. Motorized infantry have only one model, so they will never change speed. But mechanized infantry start out at 8 kilometers an hour and can later be upgraded to 10 and eventually 12 kilometers an hour, which is the same speed as motorized. So depending on where you are in mechanized tech will play a role in whether you decide to pair a specific tank model 
with the weaker but faster motorized or the much heavier hitting combat optimized mechanized battalions. The tanks themselves also vary in speed and you'll want to pay attention to this. For example, the Great War tank has a maximum speed of only 6, but the comparable in terms of its battlefield role Sherman in 1941 has a combat speed of 9 and its upgrade T20 has a combat speed of 10. Basically, you'll want to make sure that whatever infantry unit you're pairing with your tanks doesn't slow them down significantly, or vice versa. It's also not smart to put a T95 with a max speed of 3.5 slower than regular leg infantry with a motorized company, since they're going to be slowed down significantly and their presence isn't going to have much of an effect. In the case of heavy and super heavy tanks, it's often better to go with regular leg infantry, special forces, or if you want, a mechanized unit, Although their mobility won't be useful, they still do pack more of a punch than leg infantry, which will give you a harder fighting division overall. This speed rule definitely isn't hard and fast, and there are definitely other ways to do things, but it's the rule of thumb I like to go by, and because of that, I don't like mixing different weight classes of tanks in the same division. So let's go ahead and just set up a standard medium tank unit that'll be very versatile and usable in many different areas of the war. We are trading some specialization for flexibility here, but the point is just to give you an idea of what a good armor division should look like. Now, as always, I'm going to add an engineer and a recon company because they're so cheap in terms of resources and provide such significant core benefits, especially in terms of boosting this unit's ability to fight in harsh terrain, which is something that tanks by themselves give you significant penalties to the more of them you have. The third support company I would pick is definitely the maintenance company. These are useful to infantry to some degree, but if you're underproducing infantry weapons to the point that regular equipment breakdown is really keeping you from being able to supply guns to your guys, you're probably doing something wrong. Tanks, however, being so much more production heavy and smaller in number, are the sort of thing that, when they break down, it makes a pretty huge difference on the battlefield. So adding that maintenance company for the plus 30% reliability is definitely worth it. And I usually even increase the reliability of my tank models further by creating variants. It gets a little trickier from here. My usual go-to, the field hospital, isn't quite as valuable attached to a tank unit just because they tend to use so much less manpower than, for instance, a regular 20-wide infantry. They also tend to die less, so EXP loss isn't as much of an issue. The next support company I almost always pick up is Support Anti-Tank. This won't always be the best choice, especially if you're playing against a nation that doesn't produce a lot of tanks of their own. But a lot of times you'll find your tanks are going up against enemy tanks, and every little extra bit of hard attack and piercing they can pick up is a win. While tanks do take up a lot of supply, I'm not the biggest fan of the logistics company for armor. Simply because tanks are most effective used in high supply areas where there isn't rough terrain to begin with, so it's almost a little bit of a waste. You shouldn't be putting them in situations where they need this in the first place. The strongest arguments you can make are for support artillery, especially if your tanks are in charge of breaking through enemy mass infantry formations, which is a common role for them, and signal companies because the increased initiative will compound on the mobility of your tanks, allowing them to push forward faster with good planning bonuses and be even better at everything they're supposed to be doing. So this is the basic setup I'd use for a medium tank division. Now as you can see, like line artillery, self-propelled artillery have a combat weight of 3. So we can't just swap them out for medium tanks without tweaking the division to get back down to an optimal combat width, or building it larger if we wanted to go for a 40 wide. The way I would typically do this is by removing some of the armored vehicles. So we've lost out on some HP and a small amount of organization and recovery rate, but our soft attack has also gone up significantly. Our heart attack has also been reduced by a significant amount, unfortunately, and we've lost out on defense, a large amount of breakthrough, and a decent amount of armor and piercing. Now here's the basic division we created earlier, where we've replaced all of the medium tanks with medium tank destroyers of the same era and base chassis. 
Tank destroyers go at the same speed as regular tanks, so we don't lose out on any speed, although we do still take the small penalty to HP and organization. Our soft attack has tanked. We lost more than half of it. But in return, our hard attack has gone up by a fairly significant amount. We lose out on defense and, again, a lot of breakthrough. But our piercing has also gone up significantly. And remember, all you have to do to get the benefits of piercing is to have your piercing be 0.1 higher than the enemy's armor. So those extra 10 points could make a huge, huge difference. As a final note, I created this binary infantry division to demonstrate the differences between towed line artillery and self-propelled artillery. So these are the base stats for a binary infantry division operating with a large amount of towed artillery. If we swap these out instead for medium self-propelled artillery, you can see that our soft attack goes up significantly. We lose a small amount of heart attack, a small amount of defense, and a small amount of breakthrough, but we also gain a significant amount of armor, and perhaps more importantly, we gain 27% hardness. Whereas the base division had a hardness of 0%, meaning they'll be taking all of the soft attacks thrown at them. Similarly, here's a 20-wide infantry unit set up to be a tank-killing unit. Let's see what happens when we replace the towed anti-tank with a smaller number of tank hunters. So we can't fit as many tank destroyers in here as we would have been able to fit towed anti-tank. And with the smaller number of vehicles, we actually have less hard attack than we would have with the towed version. Our soft attack has also gone down, but we gain a decent amount of breakthrough and a large amount of armor, as well as a small amount of hardness. For this reason, I see a compelling argument to add self-propelled artillery instead of line artillery to support an infantry division, but in terms of tank hunting infantry, it's probably a better bet to stick with the single wide towed guns, as opposed to supporting them with tank destroyers who are much better when placed in their own unit. Their speed won't even make a difference because they're slowed down by the infantry, so you might as well stick the slower AT guns in there anyway. Even if we get rid of additional infantry to fit in more tank destroyers, the stats other than armor and hardness still go down overall, versus the original setup. Now you should know all you need to know to build effective tank divisions. If any part of this confused you, be sure to go back and check out our videos on what all the different stats mean and what each individual battalion can bring to the field. Up next, we're going to talk about motorized and mechanized infantry divisions.